Alleluia, Christ is risen. pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah foretells a time when God will swallow death itself and wipe away people's tears. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 118 responsively by half verse. You will read the bolded lines. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim The Lord is my strength and my song. There is a sound of exultation 
and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. Peter preaches that through the death of Christ, God invites Gentiles into his kingdom. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to the Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Will you pray with me? May God grant that only the truth will be spoken here and only the truth will be heard. In the name of God, who creates, who redeems, and who sanctifies. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's not much of an Easter story, is it? An early morning, an attempt at adhering to the obligations of caring for a decaying body, an empty tomb, a young man sitting where otherwise only the dead would lie, a message telling of a resurrected Jesus and of going back to Galilee. And the women turn and run away from the tomb, for fear and terror had seized them. Where's the resurrected Jesus? Where is the joy, the trumpets and the timpani? Where are the great alleluias? There is none of it. And if you ask me, that's a bit disconcerting. In fact, if scripture is to be believed, these women are not even telling anyone what they have seen and heard. Instead, they just turn, break into a run, probably thinking, get me out of here. I can't make sense of this. This does not compute with anything that I know of the dead or of our obligation to them and I am afraid. I am so afraid that I can only run. I am so afraid that I remain silent when I should speak. I am so afraid that I miss the message and fail to take it into the world. Not much of an Easter story, is it? There is a reason why the words, don't be alarmed or easier, fear not, 
appears 365 times in the Bible. Once, if you want, for each day of the year. In a leap year like this one, you get to be afraid for one day. <laughs> it's the message that the prophets from Isaiah all the way to Micah convey to their hearers again and again. Don't be afraid. It's the message that the angels speak at Jesus' birth. Don't be afraid. It's the message that the young man gives to the women in the empty tomb. Don't be afraid. But fear comes so natural to us. After all, there is so much to fear in the world. Diseases and guns, pointless arguments and wars, traffic accidents, and the random mountain lion that might have just picked you out for dinner tonight. Fear is the reason why black men fare so much worse in police encounters than their white counterparts. Fear is the reason why Gaza has become a bloodbath. Fear is what closes otherwise reasonable, even compassionate people off from their reason and compassion. Because fear is known to seize us, to take control of us, take control of our hearts and our minds and possess us, closing us off from love and care and possibility and living into the miracle of resurrection. Fear not, the young man said to the women, and they run away in fear. Perhaps you know that there is, just a few chapters earlier in the Gospel of St. Mark, the story of another man who is loose in a cemetery. The cemetery is in Gerasa, not Jerusalem. But like Jesus, the man was left there. Unlike Jesus, he was alive all along. And like Jesus, breaking all chains and fetters of death, he is breaking all the worldly iron chains and fetters designed to hold him, just in a much more self-destructive way than Jesus did. And the townspeople are terrified of him and of his madness until Jesus sails across the lake and heals him. But instead of throwing them a party, a party for both the healer and the healed, the good people of Gerasa are afraid again and beg Jesus to leave. There is more power in him than they know how to live with. First, they were afraid because the man was possessed. Now they are afraid because the man is healed. What does it take for them and for us not to allow fear to cloud the miracle that our lives are? Now, before I'm accused of being Pollyannish, let me tell you that fear has a place in our lives. Fear makes us hit the brakes when we see a car barreling down on us, Fear makes our antennas go up when we are in an unfamiliar place and not certain what's going on there. There are even times when we need to be afraid of another person, the abuser, the one who threatens us with a knife, your proverbial ax murderer. But most of the time, fear just deceives us. It seizes us and paralyzes us and keeps us from living into God's marvelous creation, all while whispering into our ear, this will keep you safe. Now, thankfully, at some point, the women must have overcome their fear. Thankfully, at some point, they must have looked at each other and said, 
Did you see this too? That man in the empty grave. Did you hear him too saying that Jesus was raised? Should we go back to Galilee where it all began? Because if they hadn't, we, you and I, we wouldn't be here this morning. If they hadn't, there wouldn't have been the people of the way. There wouldn't have been a church forming in their wake. There wouldn't have been 2,000 years of church history and ministry, 2,000 years of music and architecture and poetry and beauty, never mind tangible, believable hope beyond all death, all because the cemetery was not Jesus' final destination, but only a stop on his road to resurrection. We often say that after Christ's ascension, the church became the body of Christ in the world. That it is now we who are the ones to live resurrection in and for the world, to heal, to welcome, to include, to stretch our arms out in welcome without fear. Every day of the year we can hear the words, fear not. And this is what can happen when we don't allow fear to paralyze us. God's ongoing story with humanity will open itself to us, finding in encounters, in shared stories, in embraces and in laughter, our love for life and God's love for us. It's a love that does not even shy away from the grave, but lets us go beyond so that the entire created universe can sing the hymn of Easter, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us join together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling as you are able,
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our Bishop, Kim Lucas, and our presiding Bishop, Michael Curry. For this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the Church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. God who rose, resurrect us. We have belonged to communities, workplaces, and spiritual spaces that have demanded our death far more than they ever advocated for our life. They ask us to die to self the ambiguity of the command, like grabbing a knife by its blade. No longer will we mirror the hands of neglect that the world uses daily. Let joy find us today. Remind us that any spirituality which is always death, never resurrection, is a farce. What liberation we taste today may we crave in full as we refuse to wander back to the chains that once held us. May joy find us. Not a joy absent of story or sorrow, but a joy whose allegiance is to memory. A joy that is not quick to forget the agony of Good Friday or dismiss the doubt of Silent Saturday. May we remember and rise to meet hope nonetheless, knowing our liberation is whispering up at us from its empty grave. Amen. Lord God, you formed each star, each tree, each creature, each member of the human race, all of us, bearing your image. Grant that we might live as one family in the light of your risen Son. We pray all things through that same Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Will you please rise? The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us exchange the sign of God's peace among ourselves.
no one over. Yeah, we have plenty of room even. But yeah, thanks. Please be seated. Welcome to all of you who have decided to come here this morning and spend your Easter Sunday morning with us. May this be here in person in the sanctuary. May it be online where you are following us. Welcome to St. John's this morning. For those of you who are wondering, we are doing this every Sunday, so come back next week. <laughs> There is an Easter egg hunt following immediately this service. However, and this is important, if you want to hunt eggs, you need to stay in the sanctuary, first of all, before we have you separated out in the right age groups. Please do not just start running. <laughs> the Easter bunny has enough for everyone. It looks that way outside, I've seen it, believe me. We are now turning our attention from the Word of God to the table that God sets for each and every one of us here as a community together. It is the table of God and therefore it is welcome and open to everyone. If you are new here, if you put out one hand, it means we are the clergy dipping a wafer into wine and handing it to you. If you present us with both of your hands crossed this way, we are giving you a dry wafer and you can drink from the cup that is placed by a cupbearer right next to us. Now, please do not dip your own wafer. We have been asked by the diocese that that is unsanitary and we should please not do it. And so those are the rules we seek to follow. Again, this is the table of God and therefore each and every one of you is welcome. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into God's courts.
the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us rulers of creation, but we turned against you, and we betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets and apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, 
to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Let us pray. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave thanks, and said, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, and Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at the work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.